Well, I don't know if you've been following this. I don't know if you've been following the absolute destruction, the evisceration, the collapse of Wolf Hollywood, but it's happening. Disney's going to lose nearly a billion dollars. Nearly a billion dollars on movies this year. Collapse after collapse after collapse. Losing two to three hundred million on Woke Indiana Jones, two hundred million on Lightyear last year, losing a hundred million on Little Mermaid. The list goes on and on. They had another animated film, Elemental, I think, that lost two hundred million dollars. They're about to release Snow White. That's going to lose hundreds of millions of dollars. It's an absolute destruction. Now, yeah, there are movies out there that are doing well. That's undeniable. Um, you know, Top Gun Maverick. Um, even the Barbie movie, for all of its wokeness, is probably going to make a billion dollars. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 kind of exceeded expectations for Marvel when in a time when most Marvel movies are struggling just to break even. Well, now Hollywood has given up. They know they have no new original ideas. You wonder why everything's a remake? It's because most Hollywood studios have refused to cover anything that isn't an existing IP, an intellectual property that people already know. That's why there aren't any new interesting movies. They're all just remakes. There's a Polly Pocket movie coming out for crying out loud, okay? Well, now they're saying exactly what we've all known, and I'm absolutely 100% here for it. We'll get into this story after a quick word from this video sponsor. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Private Internet Access. Look, it's 2023. If you don't have a VPN, you're missing out on a ton of benefits, not just a more secure connection, but if you're paying for Netflix, Disney Plus, or any other streaming service, you're already getting locked out of a ton of additional content that you could be enjoying if you used a VPN. And since they've been sponsoring the channel so long, they've rolled out a massive discount for my viewers. That's right, 84% off plus four months free. It's $2.03 a month, four months free, 84% off. Private internet access also offers privacy on all your devices, lightning fast global server network. And look, outside of all the additional content you're gonna be able to view out there using private internet access, it also has a strict no logs policy it's open source, it has state-of-the-art updates, it's instant to set up. You can put it on all of your devices, your tablet, your computer, your mobile phones. It has unlimited bandwidth and so much more. If you don't have a VPN yet, make today the day, use my link in the description to get private internet access, start being more secure, and unlock loads more content. Paramount CEO announces end to original content. Studio, studio will now focus exclusively on remakes. By the way, uh, this is an excellent report over on thepublica.com, which is my and Sydney Watson's news outlet. Uh, we cover stuff like this all the time, and I, and I hope that uh, you'll um, you know, make checking that website out a, uh, a, a daily thing, because there's always news articles there. Paramount CEO Brian Robbins has announced that the studio will no longer release original animated films and will instead shift its focus to releasing content using existing intellectual property instead. Which, by the way, what's wild about that is existing IP isn't even a slam dunk anymore. If you look at the you know Marvel movies, they're no more of they're no gimmies anymore. You look at a Disney movie, existing IP, Little Mermaid, they still, can't un, they still can't do it justice. They still have to make it woke. And that movie broke even probably at best, right? Which is a massive loss when you're talking about a five or $600 million investment. In an interview with Variety, Robbins, who has extensive experience in Hollywood, stated that recent actors and writer strike has brought the industry to a standstill. The strike which began on May 2nd, saw the Writers Guild of America, which represents nearly 12,000 screenwriters, walk off the job in an effort to increase the royalties that they receive from streaming services that license their work. On July 14th, 150,000 actors joined them, sparking, excuse me, sparking an industry-wide shutdown. Well, what they're not talking about, which is actually a very big part of 
the writer's strike is in fact their demand that they stay away from AI. When you talk about, when you think about the formulaic nature of modern Hollywood, these writers know for a fact that they are going to be replaced in large, in large numbers by AI. I mean, look what happened to Twitter. Elon Musk got rid of what, 85% of the 7,000 staff members and Twitter runs the same as it always has. Think about that. The guy cut 6,500 jobs out of 7,000 jobs and nobody noticed. So of the 12,000 screenwriters, how many of those do you think can be replaced by AI? My prediction is by 2025, nearly 80% of them. Nearly 80%. Quote, outside of Barbie, things aren't going so hot for Hollywood studios who write the creative community's diminishing residual checks, Robin says. The cable business is vaporizing. Movies have been eclipsed by TikTok and YouTube and streaming which has supposed to usher in a golden era of entertainment, turned out to be too expensive to maintain. That is an absolute savage two-sentence statement that is actually based and true. 100% self-aware, 100% correct. Yes, cable TV is vaporizing. Movies have been eclipsed by TikTok and YouTube. Usually when I have like an hour to kill, I'll watch an episode of the best ever food review show. I just watched one last night that was two hours long of him in, in, or him in some Middle Eastern country. Instead of putting a movie on, I watched a YouTube video of a guy with hair implants uh, eating bugs because that's more entertaining. And I, I'm like, oh, I don't have to deal with any political messaging. I don't have to deal with any wokeness. I don't have to deal with any divisiveness. It's just entertainment. He admits here, and YouTube, the, you know, he admits, look, <laughs> TikTok and YouTube are eating our lunch. Streaming is unsustainable. Disney Plus, in, in, in case you guys didn't know this, outside of Netflix, every major streaming service is absolutely hemorrhaging cash. Hemorrhaging cash. I'm not talking about a little bit of money, friends. I'm talking about... Millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. Robbins explains that the box office profits are down 20% compared to pre-lockdown levels, which to him means more film goers would rather consume media at home. In spite of this, the Good Burger director maintains that he's still interested in making movies for cinemas, adding that the publicity that accompanies that kind of launch makes films more popular when they hit home entertainment. I'd agree with that. But if you're like me, I don't know, you can let me know in the comments. If you're like me, I find that the overwhelming, so when, when the lockdowns happen, when theaters close down, I noticed that, you know, I saved a lot of money because I couldn't go out. So I put in you know, a little home theater system. And now it's like, oh, I bought a popcorn machine for 200 bucks. So I can make theater popcorn at home. I can have drinks at home. I can pause the movie. I can take my own bathroom breaks and not miss anything. I don't have some weirdo coughing in my ear or some, you know, Gen Zers on their cell phone the whole time. So when I see a commercial, like there's a movie I saw, uh, a trailer for a movie that looks like a ripoff of Severance in a way called The Corner Office. I'm like, that looks cool. At no point I was like, oh, I want to go to the movie theater to see that. I'm like, I'm just going to put it on my calendar. I'm going to rent it. I'll even pay 10 bucks to rent a movie or 15 bucks to rent it at home. I'd still rather stay home. Now, I did go to the theater last week to see Oppenheimer, but the, the number of movies that I'm like, I want to see this in the theater went from, I would say for me, 20 a year, 20 to 25 movies a year. I would be like, oh, I got to go see that down to like five. And I think that there are a lot of people like that. On top of that, you have people that were absolutely destroyed, ruined, wrecked by mainstream media and fear over the coof. I said this years, a year or two ago when, when the lockdowns happened, I said there would be 5 to 10% of people that will literally never go back to the movies. 
They will never go back to another concert because they live in fear. That's real. Those people aren't going to the movie theater anymore. He continues, with the film industry's remaining uncertain, Robbins, who has worked for Paramount and Nickelodeon since 2021, explains that it is unwise for the production company to release an expensive original animated movie and just pray people will come. It's not about Disney or Pixar anymore, he said, underscoring Disney's latest film, Elemental, which had an underwhelming opening weekend. People are looking for animated movies that are irreverent and have a comedic point of view. Despite the film debuting at only $29.6 million, Elemental has now grossed over $359 million worldwide. That's still a massive loss, by the way. News of Robbins' decision disappointed movie lovers online, many of whom say Paramount's new plan to spend less and save more is likely due to recent box office failures. Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, which starred Chris Pine and released in March, reportedly grossed $200 million with a $150 million budget, which means they lost $200 million on that. Similarly, Babylon, an original film written and directed by Damien Chazelle, an $80 million budget, only grows $63 million, another $200 million. By the way, I will say this. I thought the Dungeons & Dragons movie was pretty good. Some believe a lack of marketing power is to blame for Paramount's recent shortcomings. Others share Robin's sentiments. One movie lover on Twitter who goes by the handle TMNRUD said, People don't want studios to take risks and be original. People want them to do this, but don't turn up in theaters when it's time to. What are you expecting? I actually agree with that. People don't turn up for original movies. I mean, it's like, they, that's why they, they just shy away from it. Although Paramount's upcoming animated feature, Under the Boardwalk, will debut on streaming platform Paramount+, Plus, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, which is inspired by an existing IP, will premiere in theaters this Saturday, a movie that I want nothing to do with because Seth Rogen's a moron. But this is, he's saying the quiet part out loud. He's saying, look, we can't compete with YouTubers. We can't compete with TikTok. And he's 100% right.